Welcome to this week's edition of The Lowdown, presented by Lexus. Robbie Musso, Tim Howard on Lowdown duty, and don't they love it? I'm, Re <laughs> I'm Rebecca Lowe. Five questions, 30 seconds to answer each one. Don't know what it is. The chaps are turning the tables. Who's got the first question? Hey. Tim. We all agree that Ten Hag should and will keep his job to the end of the season, but if you were Manchester United ownership, at the end of the season... I don't know if I do agree, but anyway, okay, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, would you keep Ten Hag? Well, I suppose I agree that right now there's yeah, no point yeah. in firing, I suppose. Yeah, but they should have maybe done it. I, I think they should have done it when they came in. Um, sorry, what was the question? Willie, in the will summer. You, will you keep him? Would you keep no, him? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. I mean, you guys know how I feel. Since, <laughs> I feel day, like, oh, no. since day one, I've said absolutely he is not the right fit for Manchester United. Nothing I have seen from his side on the field or from him in his media duties and his personality has made me think anything other than that he is just not the right fit for Manchester United. And also, all the work that, that the new United, uh, I was going to say owners or part owners, Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos have done off the field has been so encouraging and good. You can't then not change what's happening on the field because it's not like it's going particularly well. I like the whistle. Like... We don't even, don't even don't blink at the whistle. Oh, yeah, no, no, but we <laughs> still like just whistle me. <laughs> yes, but like me. Um, <laughs> second question for you. I think it's a good question. So, what are your thoughts on former top referee Mark Clattenburg's role yeah. at Nottingham Forest? You know, I'm caught with this, Musty, because... And this is nothing to do with Mark, because he's a pal of ours. So, this isn't, this isn't about yeah. Mark. This is about his role, like you say. I'm caught between thinking... Kind of well done, Evangelos Maranakis, the Nottingham Forest owner. He seems to have got an edge over everybody else in, in this role that he's created to have a consultant. And the reason I say that is because he was so outspoken this weekend, Mark Lattenberg, that it makes me worry for the referee next weekend who's refereeing a Nottingham Forest game, who even subconsciously might think... Oh, I don't really want to come out with a Mark Clattenburg post-match quote on my performance. Maybe I'll, you know, maybe give Forrest a bit of the benefit of the doubt, which is exactly why Marinette is doing you're, it. That's the edge you're that's talking about. That's the edge I'm talking about, right? So other I'm clubs thinking, do it? I'm thinking cheeky cute for Maranakis. Maybe mm. other clubs now do it. Who mm. knows? But I don't like it mm. as a whole, as a holistic answer to your question. Absolutely not. What on earth are we doing? Everything, mm. everyone's becoming too important and too. We, we should be talking about the players and the managers and the goals, not about the refereeing consultants and giving them airtime, mm. which we did today. But I think we had to because it was a story. Yeah. Tim. Well, interesting referees whistles again. The whistle went. That did it? No. It, no, matter, no. it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What was your reaction to the Chelsea fans booing Pochettino? I mean, they didn't just boo him. They they were screaming obscenities at him. <sighs> It's a worry because the away fans are often a good gauge. Mm. Often the away fans stick longer than the home fans. Mm. And now the away fans have turned. I'm concerned for Pochettino. And I'm mainly concerned because it's not like when Abramovich left and the new owners came in, they became a really stable club. Yeah. Like we don't sack managers. They've sacked loads of managers since they've come in, Todd Bowley and co. So I'm concerned for him. I would not put it outside the realms of possibility Pochettino gets fired before the end of the season. Wow. They're 11th, aren't they? Oh, yeah. They're 11th in the Premier League. That is absolutely not OK. They finished 12th last season. It's not improvement enough. And even though, yes, all the factors he's had to deal with, and I'm a big Pochettino fan, I don't think he should get fired, but I do think I should now in March, have seen something Pochettino-like on this Chelsea team. I've seen no. absolutely nothing. Rob. Whew. OK, this next question <laughs> is about Liverpool. OK. Uh, and having recently won their first trophy of the season, yep. how many more do you think they're going to win? I think they will win one more. It'll, I, and I think it'll be either the FA Cup or the Europa League. I think that that I want to believe, not that I'm a Liverpool fan, but I want to believe in the fairy tale of sending Klopp out on a quadruple, not the quadruple. We have to continue to make that clear because it's Europa League, not Champions League. But that would be just magic, right? But that doesn't always happen in football. Football is magic. It's not always perfect, though. And that would be a perfect way for Klopp to go out. I think he'll win one more. I'm probably going to say I think they might win... I think they might win the Europa League. Why not the league? So I think Arsenal are going to win it. Oh. I know, although I'm a little bit worried about the Sheffield United game. I don't know why. I'm just a little bit worried. But I also change my mind every week. Next! <laughs> On a weekly production call, you asked each of us who our player of the season was. Let me buy you some time. Okay. I said Ali Watkins. I got, I got applause on the call. You want to use that? You can. Who's your player of the season? I'm going to use that. I think I led the applause on the phone call about Ollie Watkins because you said, Ollie Watkins is not very sexy, but I'm going to go for him. I said, I think it is sexy. Yeah. I think what Ollie Watkins has done this season is 
incredible both as a goal scorer and as, an, as a creator of goals. Um, more than 10 in both categories, only player to have done that. And what I love most about him is how he's come up through the, mm. through the leagues. You know, playing for Exeter City down in, what, League Two. And now look at him probably, definitely, surely going to the Euros with England and being the number two to Harry Kane and being the leading English goal scorer. I think he's had an amazing season. You can't help but love him as a character. He's super low maintenance, super low key, and yet produces every week. So for me, so far, the player of the season is Ollie Watkins. Phil Foden is pushing him close, mm -hmm. though. Is that it, chaps? I think that's it. Good lowdown. <laughs> Don't forget, you can catch the lowdown and all of our original content on the NBC Sports YouTube channel, including the two Robbies podcast. Tim is a guest on that next episode coming out shortly, plus the Premier League tactic session with the boys and Premier League update where you can get all of the goals and post-match reaction as well. That was this week's lowdown presented by Lexus. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.